Hello class, Professor Williams, College of San Mateo, Sociology 105, Contemporary Social Issues. I want to talk to you a little bit about Chapter 10, Physical and Mental Illness. Okay, one of the great things about Chapter 10 is it talks about the sociology of illness, the sociology of illness, and they ask you questions that have to do with what illness has to do with society. Why is it that illness becomes a so social issue and not just a personal issue? Some people get sick. How does it become a social issue? Why are all of us concerned about each and every person that gets ill? Well, if you've heard the term Obamacare, you already know some of that. Us getting ill actually is a big deal. Sickness and illness is a big deal when it comes to how we handle it. If we turn our backs and we say, everybody, if you get sick, you get sick. You have to deal with it on your own. You pay for it on your own. It has nothing to do with me unless I'm the one sick. If we do that, our society changes very much. And is that the society that we want? Because it is a way of saying that if you cannot pay I'll get to that in a minute. But if you cannot pay to get yourself well, then you just have to die. Is that the society? Is that the world we want to live in? Is that the society we want to live in? Because since we, the United States, have put the care of illness into the hands of people who mean to earn money at it, we have put our population in a rather difficult situation. Okay. Should people really be allowed to die because they cannot pay? I don't know. Let's give me an example. Um, $100, I'm sorry, $600 for an EpiPen. Should they just go ahead and die as a result? Uh, you draw your own conclusion, but if you were asking me personally, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say that even though we believe in capitalism as an economic system in the United States, maybe when it comes to medicine, not everything in our country needs to be a, a, a profit-making entity. And maybe not all of it. Maybe certain things should be something that we all do together. That is, yes, our taxes happen to help pay for it, but everybody has access and equal access. That, that's a thought. That's a thought. Just think about this as you go through chapter 10. Why is the social uh, I think I just covered this. Why is social organization of medicine part of the social problem? Should people who can pay more get better health care? Should those who can pay less get worse health care and have their life expectation shortened because they were just accidentally were born to poor families? And what are we going to say to these people? Next time you're born, choose a, a more wealthy family. Is that what we're going to say to them? Or are we going to say, you know what? Health care is a right. We are going to see to it you get proper health care, and then you earn your way up in society the best way you can, um, doing the best things that you can. I don't want to stop talking to you about this before I mention this term, mental illness. It is something that we don't talk about a lot in this country, and we tend to ignore a large percentage, I'm talking better than 30%, of the people who are on the street homeless are actually mentally ill. And so the ability of them taking care of themselves and maintaining a home and going back to it and paying the bills and the um, utilities, etc., it just doesn't exist. They just cannot do it. This goes a little further. Quite a few people who are in jail are actually mentally ill. Any crime, if in fact they uh, committed one, <laughs> any crime that they committed, they may not have had a choice the way you and I have a choice. They not have, may not have had the control of their mental faculties in order to not do the things they did. And we, as a society, I'm talking United States now, uh, have not adequately provided for the kind of mental care needed for them to not go to jail, for those kind of... Uh, for them not to be homeless. Do we have a responsibility to do that? Finish chapter 10 and then answer that question for yourself. I have my thoughts. I think you're going to have yours. You're going to think about this. And you're going to 
what are we doing? Why are we doing it this way? Is there a better way? Yes. You can look at in chapter 10, you're going to see other countries who do this completely differently with a completely different result. Maybe a result that we want, that we want for our people. Maybe a result that we want for our families, for our loved ones. You don't get a chance to choose if you're going to be mentally ill or not. It just happens. It's just like being tall or short or whatever. It just happens to you. So take a look at these things with this clear mind as to things don't have to stay the way they are. They can be different. They can be better. And they can be better for the long term if we as a society make a different choice.